Hey yo, my name is Sarah and happy Halloween! Woo! It's that time of year again when ghosts and ghouls come out to play and what better way to celebrate this special day than with a book review on Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab, second book in the Cassidy Blake series. Right off the bat, I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. We take up on our second location in Petty to film the series for Cassidy's parents and, you know, we just gotta love Paris and its hauntings because Cassie as well as Jacob come across a haunting and things just don't go well for them because, you know, when do things ever go well? I had fun returning with the team. I miss Cassie and Jacob. They are the best. I like how we are now in a different location. So like again, Petty last time was in Edinburgh, Scotland and now we're in uh, France. Can't wait for our next location. And this just reminded me of the vibes for one of my favorite movies, As Above, So Below, because we deal a lot with the catacombs in Paris, so that was fun to revisit. As for the story itself, it was again a good welcome back, but it also felt like it was missing a little bit something until I read further on the story. It's like, oh, it's kind of one of these stories. So again, it was a good story, but it was still at the end, meh. It was a good follow-up. That's all I have to say about this book. It was a good follow-up from the previous book, but also means I can't wait for the next one because, again, we're going to all these haunted locations and it's fun. And again, with it being pretty much a small book, that's probably as much as I can get into spoilers. So, yeah. Hell of Bones by Victoria Schwab, second book in the Cassidy Blake series. Four out of five stars. Bye, non-spoilers! Spoilers. I thought it was cute that Cassidy thought Hey, we're in Paris. There probably won't be that many hauntings. <laughs> Cassidy, we're in Paris. Don't you know how many people died in the city alone? I mean, we're talking about plagues, revolutions, wars. There's a lot of dead people here. And I don't know what it is about the people of Paris, but every time Cassidy's parents went around saying, yeah, we're here to film these haunted, spooky places in your beautiful city, they were all like, Mm -hmm. Yes, we do not have that here. We are full of artisans and scholars and musicians. I'm like, do do the people of Paris have a thing against ghost sun hauntings? Because I'm pretty sure y'all would and y'all probably want to bank off of that. But they're treating it like, uh, no, we do not have any ghosts here. And the best way how the parents decide to get Cassidy more involved in the show is that she's practically going to be doing the B-roll. So it's like, I would have loved to see what was like going on behind the scenes. We meet our new guide, Pauline. Again, she's a skeptic as well. What is it with this city? Whenever, you know, they're talking about, yeah, why well, we're going to these places to film for our TV show and everything. But, you know, she and the team, the crew, do take Cassidy, Jacob, and her parents around Paris. Of course, we do go see the Eiffel Tower. We have some interesting little stories, a little romance, sad romance, and the historical things coming from the dad. And everyone's just having fun, especially Jacob. But then we gotta go to the second location to which again, it's like, reminds me of my favorite movie. Again, it's a very underrated film. I highly suggest watching it, but we do go to the catacombs and I'm like, Jacob, you can hide behind me. Cause he's like, nope, nope. Not going down there, but we have to go down there to film and oh my god, this is where trouble begins because of course there's bound to be veils since there's a lot, you know, bones and dead people down there. So while mother and father are, you know, doing their stuff and everyone's filming, Cassie's like, focus, don't open any veils. And Jacob's like, don't do it don't do it we don't need problems here but it doesn't help that the voices of the dead are really loud and i thought that they tricked cassidy into opening a veil because they're talking they're like can anyone hear us both in english and french and then when one spirit goes like help like screams it out loud and cassidy falls in she was like is this a trick but apparently it wasn't because that was just like a really, really loud response from a ghost. But either way, Cassidy and Jacob go into the veil. And Jacob's like, what did I tell you? And Cassidy's like, it wasn't my fault. Let's just get out of here. And Jacob's like, for once, I agree with you. And this is where we meet our ghost of the story. Because we see this red light around the corner. And the person is counting up 1 to 10 in French. And I don't think I want to do that down here in the catacomb, so I'm with Jacob, let's get out. And because of this encounter, we are haunted a little bit Final Destination style, where I'm like, 
Okay, we got to take care of this real fast because Cassidy with her parents and Jacob after the whole encounters and the catacombs and everything, they're enjoying a nice little dinner or lunch at a cafe and all of a sudden the awning gets loose and the hook almost hits Cassidy. I'm like, whoa, that is not good. Again, we almost got taken out Final Destination style. And then another thing how we know we're haunted is because Cassidy was sure she had closed the door in their hotel, but not only was it open, getting her in trouble, but Grim the cat, that poor, poor innocent cat that should have just been left at home for his own vacation, well, he got out. And Cassidy's like, Grim never does that, so we have a problem. And Jacob's like, yeah, we definitely do have a problem. So who do we call? Lara! Through, you know, Skype calls, texts, and, uh, and phone calls, you know. <laughs> Texts, phone calls, Skypes. There, we got that. But I kind of miss Lara and her little sassiness, especially with Jacob. And it's like, this is a good way how to keep her in the loop of coming books because, you know, internet access. I'm all good for that. But through Lara, we find out we're not dealing with, you know, a ghost. We're dealing with a poltergeist, meaning that they're not connected to a veil and they just like escalate from mischief to chaos and that's what we're getting here. And we find out our poltergeist is a kid, a little boy with red eyes, so automatically I was like, Uchiha! But no, Cassie tries to do her thing with the mirror and the kid sees it, but as she told Lara, it didn't work. The kid looked at the mirror looked at Cassidy and it's like, I'm not about this, and he pushed her. And so while we're telling Lara this, that means, yeah, about that. That means the poltergeist doesn't remember either how he died or who he was. So we have a mystery on our hands, people. We figure out how dangerous this kid is because we go to like a little opera. We're just chilling while mom and dad go downstairs with the filming crew and Jacob and Cassie are just enjoying the set, watching people practice and everything. And Laura is on call and she makes a little comment saying, oh yeah, there are phantoms there to help him with the tourism. That's like, we have an actual, you know, phantom of the opera. And that's where she gives us the details of trying to figure out, you know, do we know anything about this kid? And all Jacob can say is like, you know, the kid was counting up in French and old timey, so we got like a little old timey thing considering how old the catacombs are. Well, we figure out how, you know, dangerous this poltergeist can be because he tries to take out mom and dad when they return, you know, stage set mishap, but luckily there's backups to prevent an actual incident from happening, but that's when Cassie gets it through her mind. We have a problem. What I did enjoy in the story though is how, because of this poltergeist, we figure out this is like, you know, it could happen if a spirit was staying on this plane for too long. And, you know, that means Jacob in terms. And we get this interesting tension between them because this is when Cassie starts having weird dreams of Jacob possibly becoming a poltergeist. He's kind of a little quiet on certain matters when discussing the whole thing going on with the kid. And again, it puts like an interesting strain on their friendship, on their relationship, and also, you know, I would say give more depth into the characters, especially Jacob. And we figure this out a little bit more is because the kid's causing more mayhem in a way. And Cassidy almost gets taken out by a truck, but the truck's full of mirrors and those get out and the shards surround Jacob and he manages to look away. So in Cassidy's mind, she's thinking, oh no, Jacob's slowly forgetting who he is. And of course, he kind of connects the dots and then he gets really upset about that. And it's like, this is my stuff. I don't need to tell you about that. It's personal to me. And so again, it's that stress. We go in through the veil again, looking for the kid. And he has this thing about playing tag because again, he's a kid, he wants to play a game and it leads them back into the catacombs. And so we have another clue. He's connected to the catacombs. And while they, while Cassidy and Jacob return back out of the veil, go back to where they were supposed to be for mom and dad to figure out, this kid, you may do anything you would like, but do not mess with Grim because something happened at the hotel and already the staff are giving us strange looks. It doesn't help that a fire system went off up on their floor and first of all Graham is all wet and a mess and upset but they're like looking at them like it's their fault and they're like um 
we've been out all day filming and the staff's like it's all right we already got your stuff and your cat and we'll be moving you into another room i'm like okay kid little boy you can mess with anything except for Grim, because if you do mess with that precious little cat we're gonna have problems we do find out through the research that Cassie's dad did because you know he's a historian so he's bound to do this research. We do have a list of names of people over time that are known of that have gone missing in the catacombs and again it gave me that feel not of the movie but of that video about that guy who did go missing. Y'all know who I'm talking about the one with the camcord that was found in the catacombs with the last footage of it falling into the ground and this guy running into darkness. It, it gave me that feel and I was like <gasps> but either way we find out his name is Tomas he disappeared in like 1912 and we give that information to Laura and she finds out that Tomas's family his extended family from his brother's side are still alive here in Paris so we can go to them to look for some answers and possibly you know figure out what happened to Tomas back then and hopefully have a move along into the next life or wherever because you know, Paris, we, for all its time in history, we just have to add more ghost stuff to give it trouble because, of course, it hasn't had enough stuff on its plate already. We do have a little confrontation with him. Well, not really a confrontation, but like a little midnight visit, thinking this kid just really wants to play because he does seek out Cassidy at night. And he's like, come play with me. And she's like, no, not, not, not today, Tomas. And he gets a little upset and leaves. So it's like, can we just like figure out how to take care of him just by playing? But you know, that probably won't work because he would probably want to come back again and again and again. So that means we have to go look for, you know, the extended family. And by doing so, we get Pauline to come with us because she agrees to go with Cassie since she told her parents, I want to do this like as extended research to help with the show. And we have Pauline, a responsible adult, and we're in the subway. And apparently, you know, Tomas didn't take kindly for her not playing with him earlier on because he tricks Cassidy into going through the veil with Jacob. And they're still like on a little shaky grounds after that whole confrontation about, you know, asking if he remembers his past. Either way, Tomas tricks Cassidy through the veil off the train. And he's like, oh, ha, ha, ha. He gets back on the train and Jacob's like, we're moving. We're about to leave. So Cassidy's like, if I'm still down here as that train is leaving, that means in the real world, I'm going to miss my train. So we just narrowly make it back on. It's like, but we also, you know, through that whole situation, we have blackout and that doesn't really happen a lot. And as we go back upstairs into, you know, the light with Pauline as our guide later on, more electrical issues, <laughs> poor Paris. I feel sorry about it, but we still have a mission and we do find the relatives of Tomas. And the woman I believe is the granddaughter to his brother. And she's like very not really talkative. And she basically shoos Cassidy and Pauline and Jacob away. And Cassidy looks at Pauline and is like, if you knew she was going to do something like that, you should have told me because Pauline's been like a little quiet when it comes around to ghost stuff. And she's like, people here in Paris, like if it's very personal like this, we really don't want to talk about that. So I guess I answer stuff about some people with ghosts. But there's one person that's willing to talk and that is the woman's daughter Adele meaning we have another person on team ghost the wall wrecks are happening all over Paris as well as the occasional fires and ambulances Adele tells us a very sad story because not only does she bring photos of Tomas when he was a kid she also tells the story of how he died in the catacombs and it was during a time when him his brother and his brother's friends were playing hide and seek down there and I'm like I don't want to play hide and seek down in the catacombs but I guess that was how you did it back then and because Tomas was very good at hiding they usually had him seeking until one day his brother said okay fine you can be part of the people hiding and Tomas found an interesting place to hide and he did win the game but he never showed up and after searching all night his brother told the adults and they did find Tomas but the place where he had hidden the skeletons fell on top of him and that's how he died and that's a very sad way to go for a kid 
and so that's why he's very connected to the catacombs because that's where he died and he's still playing the game hide and seek and with the next day them leaving Paris we have to think fast and Cassie does come up with a plan to postpone the return or the leaving departure and poor Grim how dare you do this to my kitty cat but they frame the cat and by doing so Cassie's dad he does two different takes on when they're filming one through digital and one through you know film and not only does Cassie swipe the card that has the film but the actual film she makes it look like Grimm got into it and that was the take that they did at the catacombs so I'm like I see what you did but why kitty cat why why my cat and with time you know on the crunch we do manage to get back there at night after hours and Cassie does see like you know with all this the slight stress and the jittering that her parents have it makes it the second take more you know believable so you know if she thinks it's more believable the views might go up when this airs but either way we have a mission and that is to not only kind of play the game with Thomas but show him the pictures and try to get him to remember because Adele does give Cassidy the pictures and so we go into the veil for pretending to play hide and seek and Tomas is interested and Cassidy kind of cheats by catching him while Jacob's still counting and he has a pouty face. I'm thinking, okay, we have him. Let's show him the picture, try to get him to remember. But in Tomas's mind, he's not first of all looking at the picture. He's thinking, y'all cheated. No fair. And he has control over the catacombs because we have tunnels opening with lost souls wandering in. And we found out what happened last time with <laughs> Madame Raven from Edinburgh, what happens if Cassidy gets captured. So we are now running in the catacombs and it's like, this is what happens when you cheat with a kid ghost? Very uncalled for kid. Jacob's, you know, tackling ghosts, Cassie's evading ghosts, and at the time, um, one of the ghosts that Jacob does protect Cassie from, they manage to swipe his clothing before releasing him into the other. And uh, we have Jacob wearing that, pretending to be the brother, Robert, and trying to get, you know, Tomas to come out. And at the same time, Cassie casually placed these, you know, um, the photographs around. And here comes Tomas. He's falling for it. He's seeing the pictures and that red that he had, his Uchiha, it's slowly fading, meaning that's his essence of a poltergeist. And it's like, as he's going, this is the color's going away. He's slowly remembering. And this is the time Cassidy's gonna try to, you know, get him to remember fully. Plan doesn't go well because the place where she hid, she fell through the skulls and she has to fight her way through the wall of skeletons. At the same time, Jacob's holding Tomas and I know he's a little kid, causing chaos, possibly getting people injured and almost dying. But I also had that feeling, you know, when in Kimetsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer and Rui was like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You still kill people, but you finally realize some, all this stuff that was happening with your parents and you're like, I'm sorry. That's how I felt for Tomas. When, because Jacob has him, he remembers and Cassie's about to release him and he doesn't want to go like he is scared He's specs me a kid. He's worried. He's afraid. He doesn't know what to do and he just doesn't want to go Again with Rui. I didn't know I would have emotions for that demon, but my emotions peaked again with Tomas he didn't want to go but we had to release them or Paris would be up in flames again. I don't think I want to do that ever again but we do release Tomas so he can go be on to the next life. After telling Laura we're alive, we're not dead, she's like, yes, next time don't get into any trouble again. It's the next day, we exchange numbers with Adele, so I have a feeling we, we're going to have more Skype calls with more than just one person. So we have Scotland and France in our pocket. I would like to see other places that we go and more people that we meet. Jacob does tell the story as to how he died because he does remember he just doesn't want to you know rethink about it. it's like still brings up terrible memories for him but we find out that he had died like a year and a half or so before he met Cassidy and he had actually drowned trying to get one of his brother's toys because the kid was just like you know crying 
saying that you know he wanted his toy back so being a good brother jacob went to go get it but something happened where a log or so got loose in the river and it hit him and that's all he remembers and so cassie asked well you know after you saved me didn't you want to go see your family because he was not con like, connected to his veil he's like i didn't want to do that i just didn't want to know what happened but it's like you know you're my best friend i'm gonna stick with you through and through it's like I just want you to know this in case I slowly start forgetting and you're my friend so you can tell me and she's like I'll always be there for you so their friendship is there stronger than ever and as we're getting ready to get back on the subway to go to the airport to go to our next destination Cassidy sees someone in the crowd really interesting fellow with a black jacket wearing an interesting hat and a mask and when she looks at him with the camera and he looks at her the guy's wearing a skeleton mask but it's an actual skeleton as a mask and he removes it and it's nothing and Cassidy passes out and when she comes back again they're gone so I was like we have an actual cliffhanger who is the guy with the skeleton skeleton mask and her and Jacob's like what's going on and that's the end of spoilers so again what was with that cliffhanger because i'm actually nervous and like is this not supposed to be a kid's book are we supposed to not have like happy endings but no we have a cliffhanger meaning i really really want the next book especially the next location as to where we're filming because things are getting interesting it was a simple poltergeist story with a kid that's just causing a bunch of trouble being rambunctious and he just again didn't want to move on and he lost his memories and everything so it was up to us to figure it out it was a simple classic setting for a classic um haunting story which is like you know very nostalgic to some stories movies that i like but it was still a good follow-up to the last book i still enjoyed it cassie and jacob again their bond of friendship is strengthened once more so i have a feeling we're gonna need that even more for the next story to come and don't you dare harm my cat again, Cassie. If you're coming up with an idea to, you know, lengthen y'all's stay, do not blame Grim because that cat has gone through enough, especially in Paris. And I can't wait for the next Skype call with Laura and Adele because Laura is like appalled that Adele knew everything. She's like, hey. And she's like, you're not supposed to tell people. And Adele's like, we're cool. I was like, I can't wait for that next Skype call. And again, this was a great follow-up to the previous book and I really enjoyed it. And I can't wait for the next book because that is skin that cliffhanger next book is gonna be interesting and yeah tunnel of bones by victoria schwab second book in the cassie blake series four out of five stars my name is sarah and bye